It's very colorful. It's very different. It used to be brown walls and all wood. Mm. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Amanda Duncan, and this is Wood County Now. And uh, I think I'm on the wrong script. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, I am John Ring, and this is Wood County Now. Uh, March is Women's History Month, and we're celebrating by interviewing strong females in Wood County. And today I have the honor of uh, sitting down with the Wood County Chief of Juvenile Probation, Ms. Melanie Whitehurst. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on our show today, and um, let's kind of get right into it. Okay. And, um, I just want to say real quick <laughs> that uh, I'm filling in uh, for Amanda Duncan, because uh, today she sounds like a truck driver. Ten for it, good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so today, all right, let's get into this. Miss um, Melanie? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And what is your family's history in Wood County, and how did you become Chief of Juvenile Probation? Well, uh, I'm married to an old Winsboro boy, um, James Whitehurst. I have two lovely children. I have a daughter who graduated from Quitman, and she actually attends the University of uh, Mary Harden Baylor. Um, and they just won a, a national con their conference, so she's actually getting fitted for her ring on Wednesday, which is a dream of hers. So we're pretty proud of that. Um, and then I have a younger son who is into math and science and nothing like his father and I. Um, so that's a challenge every day because he's smarter than I am. Um, I moved to Wood County. I actually quit graduate school um, and moved to Wood County in 2000. Um, I started working at the Clyde M. Johnston unit in Winsboro. That was my first job. I was a drug and alcohol counselor. I pretty much realized that I didn't really want to be uh, working with adults. Um, I felt like that my wheelhouse was, was children. Um, a job came available and I actually applied for the job. I got the job and I have been in the basement of this courthouse for 20 years. Um, I. My, everything that I have done has, in my adult life, has been in Wood County. I came here, I got married, I uh, bought my first house here, I got married in my front yard. We were oh. very poor. <laughs> um, I had my babies here. Um, it's, I, I'd like to say that, that Wood County has made me the adult that I am today. Um, I fell in love with the place. My parents actually lived on Lake Fork. They were living in a camper and they just loved the area so much that they just decided that they were going to buy a house here. Um, and so I was, I couldn't be away from my parents. I was in Oklahoma. And so I came home and, um, and I say home because this was home. And I found a rental house in Winsboro and the rest is history. That's where I met my husband. Um, in 2019, um, I was appointed, we are not elected, we are appointed, um, and I was appointed Chief of Juvenile Probation, um, and that happened June 3rd, and it's always been a dream of mine, you know, to be able to run this office and, and do what I can with what I have, and so um, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be a part of this amazing group of people. Um, and be able to run this department. Awesome. So what exactly is your job as chief and what role does your office play uh, in the lives of you know, Wood County youth? My function, my job as chief of juvenile probation is to lead this department. Um, I'm not a boss, I'm a leader. Um, if there's something that needs to be done, I'm gonna be the first person that says, let's do it this way and, and I will guide whoever needs you know, assistance. Um, I want to make the most impact with what we have and what we have to offer. Our entity is a little different than everything else because we're not CPS, we're not law enforcement, we are juvenile probation. We, we handle kids, you know, that have, have made a wrong decision and that's all it is. We've all made wrong decisions in our lives, every one of us, and it doesn't matter if you're 16 
or 60, we are still making wrong decisions. And I get this awesome opportunity to meet these awesome kids. And sometimes they don't have a support group. Sometimes they need an advocate. Sometimes they just need to be taught a certain way. And I get to, I get to, to lead four amazing people to be able to get the message out that we are going to love you through it. Um, the function of this department is to keep them out of the adult system. That's our function. Um, so if I can provide you with whatever you need before you leave these doors, before you leave these walls, and you not wind up in the adult system, that's a win for me. I plant seeds, this whole office, that's all we do, we plant seeds. And we're never gonna probably see that tree grow, but we're, we're building a functional human being. Right. And it's a, it's, a, it's a blessing and it's a huge responsibility but we don't back down from our responsibility. You know, we take it and uh, we do what we possibly can with what we have. And sometimes I ask for the community's help to be able to meet needs of kids. Um, we instilled the uh, love cabinet. The love cabinet has basic necessities for kids. So we had kids that were coming in here that didn't smell good or they hadn't showered or they didn't have clean clothes we can go back to that cabinet and we can get basic necessities, things that I take for granted every day. Um, that was one of the goals when I took over, is I wanted to be able to meet that need right then because I have a bunch of friends and I would call them and say, hey, I need a little help. Can you help me financially to, to get this kid a pair of pants or you know, to get them a shirt, uh, tennis shoes, things that we just take for granted. So we're in a position right now that you know, we've got that availability if we need it. Um, the function of probation, I know, is not a basic need. You know, I, I know some of us look, look at us and say that, that we're a punishment. This is punishment for something that you've done. That's not what this is about. This is about meeting a need. This is about us coming together and we, honestly, whatever that child needs, we put those those basic things together to meet the needs of that child. And child number one may not be like child number two. And child number two is not going to be like child number three. Right. You know that as a parent, your children are different as day and night. And that's no different than the ones we have up here. Well, you know, you see kids when they're going through the hardest point of their lives. Absolutely. And, you know, they come to you hurt. They come to you angry. How do you deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis? And above everything else, what knowledge do you want them to leave this office with? That's kind of a two-part question. Um, professionally, we, we handle it knowing that every child that comes through this, this office has trauma. Every child has to be handled knowing that they have some sort of trauma in their past. And so we do a lot of uh, TBRI, we do a lot of trauma-informed care, and we also get an opportunity to sit down with these kids and get their backstories. Some of them are very heartbreaking. And some of them, you know, some of the kids, they're just angry. And we've been in a pandemic, and we've had a lot of things happen in the world in the last two years, honestly, since I took over. And we have to remember as adults that even we're kind of out of kilter in our emotions. And we're kind of out of kilter with our day-to-day -day routines. So you maximize that times 10, and that's what you have when you have a child. So we have to remember that. We have to remember, you know, the, the, they're children, but they still have a voice. Um, and I think for far too long, we've, we've told our children, you know, that, that it'll be okay, but we don't tell them, we don't know when it's gonna be okay, and it's okay to feel that way. Um, so th professionally, we, we go back to trauma-informed care. Personally, it's been a little bit more difficult to tell you how I deal with angry children all the time. Um, you have to learn how to leave it here. Um, and you don't let that bleed over into your personal life, but it's really easy for me to say that and harder for me to do because even my 11 year old, he'll, he will say, you know, um, 
you look like you had a, a tough day today. I'm just going to leave you alone for a minute. And so you know at that point that my nonverbals are all over the place. Just give me a minute and let me figure that out. And then I, as the adult in that situation, I'm going to pull myself together and say, okay, it's all about you now. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a slippery slope, but everybody in here does a really good job of being able to separate. And I say that, we, we, we do a really good job of being able to separate the, the business from our profession or our personal lives. But there are some days that we have to leave early. We have to leave early and we have to compose ourselves and, and we have to you know get ready for our kids getting off the bus at four o'clock or our husbands getting home. And, and it's, it's difficult, it's difficult. And um, there's a lot of prayer that goes into this job. Um, there's a lot of girls and attaboys that go with this job. Um, there's a lot of cheerleading in the background for not really me, but for my, my probation officers. And, and um, I have an amazing staff that does an amazing job of being able to put things into perspective and all they want to do is help kids. And when I took over, that's all I wanted to build was this loving environment for you to come in and know that, you know, you may walk in and, and have concerns, but you're going to walk out here being informed, period. Awesome. So what are some of the, the resources that you guys provide for uh, like life skills mm -hmm. um, to help the kids, youth get back on track? Uh, so one of the things that, that we wanted to do whenever we, um, I say we, the one thing that I wanted to instill in, in whenever I became chief was this gap. And it was a gap between what my kids needed to know to, you know, what they were being taught at school. So it was during community service. And I don't know if you'll know this, but I'm usually the fat old woman that's doing community service with my children on the side of the road. And so one of my children, um, and, and I say my children, these, these kids are my kids. They are my kids. Um, when you disrespect my kids, that's, that's an issue. Um, when um, you're mean to my kids, that's an issue. Um, but we were at community service and we had taken a water break and one of my kids who's very vocal and um, gosh, he's probably, he's probably pushing 30 now, so I won't say his name, um, but we were, we were having a water break and he, he said, I just want somebody to teach me the things they're not teaching me in school. And I said, what is that? How do I do my taxes? How do I cook? How do I, how do I wash clothes? You know, how do I, how do I open a bank account? And I sat there and it was just like one of those points, one of those brain popping moments of you've got a point. We need to do that. So we had a big round table whenever I became chief and I said, this is what I want. This is my baby. This is what I want. And, and I, want to, I want to make this available for my kids. And so we got with Quitman Fire Department and we got with several people in the community. And sure enough, you know, we talked about, you know, washing clothes and cooking and, and Janae Holland and um, um, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. Um, Logan's, <laughs> uh, Logan, they helped with the cooking and then the counselors from the school, they helped with the washing clothes. And then, you know, we, we had all of these, Adam Abercrombie did the, the, um, the cars and my husband had to fill in for Adam one day and, and it's good cause he's a big car man and part of the car country classic. So, um, God has blessed me with all of these relationships. You know, and so I got all of these people together and we rallied around these kids and we had this professional panel of the, you know, Judge Hebron and, and um, different folks from the community that came out and, and told these kids, if you're going to interview, this is what you need to do, or this is what you don't need to do, or this was great that you did this. And they got undivided attention from a business person that was actually looking at them in a light that was different than a negative light that they've, some people always get looked at. Sometimes my kids wear these jackets of, 
of negativity and oh well they're a problem child and you know you're you, you know my kid can't hang out with you because you've been arrested and and but for a, that gleaming moment they had hope and for that gleaming moment they got to sit before a judge who was not reaming them but telling them that they did a good job it's beautiful it's beautiful um we did that life skills class we've done that twice and then COVID hit um we're also doing a new thing um for the girls that are at risk for human trafficking um and so we we've we've gone into a memorandum of understanding with for the silent and tyler um and we're waiting for COVID restrictions to lift so that we can get our girls into classes about self-esteem healthy relationships um, we all need that. I know if that would have done me a world of wonders whenever I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, what does a healthy relationship look like? Um, and, um, one of the other things that, that we, we have kind of, you know, played with the idea about is, um, what are we going to do with all the vapes? What are we doing with all the vapes that are on the schools? And, and, uh, you know, I sought help from my resource officers, Cody Castleberry, Jody Hedick, um, and um, said, hey, you know, what can we do? And I don't know if there's anything that we can do, but at least that communication's there. We're talking. And for us to, have, to know that there's a problem, we have to talk about that problem. And for us to have a, you know, a, a solution to that problem, we have to communicate. Because I am not the know-all be-all in Winsboro, but I know some folks are. And I'm not the know-all be-all in Quitman, but I know some folks are. And it's a county-wide issue. It's just not north side, south side. So um, that's kind of where we are. Um, no idea is ever too small or too big. Um, if my probation officer comes to me and says, hey, I got an idea, well, let's hear it. Let's figure it out. You know, let's, let's come up with a plan. How are we gonna do that? And then of course, you know, we still have the Together Against Drugs program for the fifth graders and, and Ranger Vance and um, Kurt Kelly and the judges and the district attorney's office and the sheriff's office, you know, they all get together and we all talk about choices and consequences. We don't talk about good things, bad things. We talk about choices and consequences. Right. And one thing you say, you know, we live in a very, very good community that when everybody's informed and on the same page, it thrives. Yes. And, and organizations, you know, they thrive. And yes. people get the help they need. Absolutely. Um, what, are, what are your goals for this office and for yourself personally? You know what? Out of all of the questions that you have asked me today, this is the one that's going to give me most difficulty. I am, I am, I'm on track, you know, with everything that I want to do with this department. Um, but I think that getting the message out about juvenile probation, we're not here to, you know, sit around and punish kids. We're supposed to be advocates to fill holes for kids that may be hurting. Um, and so if I could change the community's outlook on what we do, I think that would be my goal. Right. You know, it's not anything that we're doing in here because I promise you, you will never find anybody that's going to work harder for kids that are hurt and, and um, y y be their voice. But it's, it's the community's outlook on what we do. When you see my kids on the side of the road and this old fat woman working with them, sweating profusely, um, come up and say thank you. You know, um, tell them they're doing a good job. They don't hear it at home. Let's hear it from a community. Um, when they're raking leaves, you know, and your kids aren't having to travel through the leaves at the park, come say thank you. Um, I think that if we can change the ideas that we all kind of have preconceived about, you know, everything that we do uh, from the juvenile land, and you realize that they're still children and they are still babies, then we can all come together and say, you know what, y'all are doing a great job. And if we build that up as a community, maybe we won't see them in the adult system. Well, you're hearing that. Share this, get the message out, you know, and, you know, it's really important that we, um, we let the community know, Absolutely. you know, what juvenile is doing and helping kids. And so before you, well, before, before uh, you ask me about my personal goals, 
And so let me tell you this, because I think that a lot of men, women, you know, today we're on the back burner. Um, we put the job or the kids or the husband or anything else, you know, we put that all, all up front and I have been the world's worst. Um, two years ago, I was on this weight list kick and I was losing, I'd lost 52 pounds and boy, y'all, we're doing great. And then I inherited this office and there were so many things that needed to be done to get into compliance with TJJD that this was my focus between that and having a senior and getting her to college and then having this brilliant little, you know, 11 year old boy and, and making sure that I was super mom and super wife and keeping the house clean. I have, I've put myself on the back burner again. So, um, I'm, I have to put myself as a priority. So as a personal goal, that's going to be on my goal sheet for this summer is getting back in the, the, the Melanie, Melanie mode. Yes. Self care is equally as important. I mean, it really is. I preach that all the time with veterans issues. I mean, absolutely self care. Absolutely. I mean, we, we do so much to help, you know, we need to make sure that we are right there. You know? Absolutely. You can be in the moment and not be in the moment, especially as a parent. But it is harder for mom. I mean, it I is. I will say, it is harder for mom. Because while I'm cooking dinner, I'm hearing about all of the things that's happened at his job or, you know, the son's school. And, and I'm trying to get this meal prepared. And in the whole scheme of things, I'm not really giving anybody my focus. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's a goal of mine. So what would you like to see done or changed in Wood County to better support children and families you serve? Well, I think that if we can, we can change the community's view on how they view m my children um, and understand that not every child that has been referred to my office uh, is a bad child. They made a bad choice or they're just going through some stuff. And um, I, I tell the people this all the time. I wish that I, that I would have had of me when I was 13 to 15. Um, so it's really removing that jacket from, you know, the kind of the stigma about probation. Um, because if what I could change the name, this would be nothing but an advocacy group, right. period. You know, um, we, we aren't going to sit there and say, well, we're going to go see the judge and you're going to go to detention. We are, we are getting away from that mindset. Thank you, Jesus, that we are, we are not about punishment. This is all about giving them what they need. Um, so the goal for this department is honestly, and I'm, I know this is going to be weird to hear and it's going to be weird for me to even say, my goal is to give those four people out there the things that I know. So whenever I walk away from this department, I know for years after I leave that the kids are still going to be in good hands because it's not what I know that makes me valuable. It's what my team knows. It's what everybody in this department does. So if I can, if I can have you know three chiefs come out of this and go to different parts of the state of Texas, and they still have that value system of doing whatever they possibly can, you know, to affect change, that's three chiefs in the state of Texas that has like-minded individualism when it comes to, to caring for kids. Um, so that's that's kind of my deal. You know, if I take care of if, if I take care of them. They're going to take care of the kids. That's my job as their leader. Awesome. So tell me about a woman that has personally influ influenced your life and shaped you into the person you are today. Oh, my mother. Hands down, my mother. She is a saint. Um, she has to deal with me, my father, and my brother. Um, and she is an absolute saint. Um, my mom is pretty much the main person that has, you know, kind of um, made me who I am. But I will say that um, I was a big Kay Bailey Hutchison person. I was a big, um, I guess I've been a big person, a big molding clay. Um, I've worked with some really strong and wonderful females, Cindy Weems, Alice Tomerlin, uh, novice wisdom, Brenda Taylor, June Robinson. Um, I am just amazed at all of the women that I've had the opportunity to share this courthouse with. Um, 
and believe it or not, something about their personality and something about everybody that I meet. I love something about everybody that I've ever come into contact with and a little piece of them attaches to me. Um, and you know, it may be somebody's wit, it may be somebody's charm, grace, class. Um, I find it really easy to make friends um, and, it, and, and it's because of something honestly in their past that draws me to them. They have a story, most people have a story. You just have to take the time to listen to that story and get to know them a little better. That way you can see, you know, what they're about and why they want to affect the community. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a long, crazy 20 years in this basement. Well, this is the last question. I I'm ready. Promise. I promise. I'm ready. And this is probably one of the most important because this is, you know, you're talking to everybody that might be <laughs> interested in what it is that you do. Uh, what is your message to young ladies, but then also kind of make that a little bit more in depth? If there is somebody watching right now or somebody who does watch this, what would you say to somebody that, with your experience, that would want to go down this path, this career that, that you've been in? Oh, wow. Okay. I like your two-part questions there, John. Uh, okay, so the, the first part, I'm going to say this. Because if I were to answer this question, I would say that I would want to divide it up into a, a younger category and then a little bit older category. My younger category would be to the little girls that I hope you find your Prince Charming. And I hope that when you kiss that frog, he turns into the most beautiful prince ever. But I hope that you value your education and that you get that education. So if your Prince Charming turns out to be that bullfrog, that you can pay for your palace and your carriage. If we push that education, then we don't have women that are dependent on men. We just have women that are just independent, and that's a beautiful thing. For my older girls, and I will tell you that there's a bunch of freshmen in college right now that know what their mama male is gonna say, and it's to know your worth. Know your worth and never forget your worth because people will forget your worth, but it's up to you to remind them of your worth. Um, if anybody is thinking about a probation, um, there's there's a lot of things kind of happening. When y'all walked in, I was listening to the House of Representatives and kind of what was on the floor and what they were discussing. It's ever changing. If change doesn't bother you and you don't feel like that you could do the same day thing day in and day out, come to probation. Um, you know, today may be a very mild day and we may not be doing anything today. Uh, tomorrow we may have four arrested uh, and one mental health crisis. Um, and you know what? We, we're going to get through it. It's, we're not going to go home until everything's done and everything's taken care of and all the kids are, you know, in a better place. Um, probation is an ever-changing vehicle. And it doesn't matter if it's adult or juvenile. Um, it's an ever-changing vehicle, but it's necessary. It's a necessary evil, whether you want to admit it or not, um, because there are people out there that commit crimes. There are habitual people that go out and commit crimes, even as juveniles. Um, but I like our chances of being able to rehabilitate better than the adult system. And it's nothing against Devin Marcos and his crew, I love them. But, um, and that's adult probation. Um, but I just, I just want to know, I just wanted to be able to, to work with my odds because my odds tell me that, you know, rehabilitation is, uh, it's possible in juvenile world. Well, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody that's watching this. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do for the county and your staff. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> I know I'm not as good as Amanda, and that's kind of gave me on my next uh, my next topic here. Uh, next Monday, we are going to be interviewing Corey Blackshear. Uh, she is a female veteran. She works for the United States Postal Service here in Quitman. She was the quartermaster at the VFW post in Grand Saline, and she is currently the chaplain. Uh, she has three deployments, so we'll be talking with her Monday, March 29th, as we wrap up. Uh, Women's History Month and 
what? My boss is talking to me in the background. Um, I don't know what she's saying. Oh, you want to know why is Women in History Month important to me because of man? Well, because I have a mom. And I have a girlfriend, and I have daughters, and I've worked with women, I've served with women. Uh, it is very important that we um, recognize the hard work and the dedication, and just the fact that over throughout time, women have fought, and I will say that, they have fought to have a voice in everyday life. And... What, you can't do that to me. Like what? This um, she, I don't do this to her when she. I don't do. I don't do that. I don't do that. But no, um, I am. I'm honored to see that you know, uh, in the day and age that we are in, that women and men are equal, and I want to see it get better. I want to see it advance. Uh, you still see discrepancies when it comes to pay in the workplace. When it comes to women compared to men, uh, these are all the. Um, these are all things that we need to change. So it is very important to me. And next week you'll be stuck with me again because I'll be doing the interview uh, with Miss Corey Blackshear because I am a strong veterans advocate. Uh, that's what I do, and I'll be honored to do that interview as well. And so that is it. I, I just, I just want to, I just want to say one, well, one other thing, if I can. Oh no, I'm you, sorry, because uh, no, no. you know when you open up Pandora's box, you kind of have a problem closing <laughs> it. Um, I was told many years ago that I did not have what it took to be a department head. I was told many years ago that I did not have, you know, the... the Shame uh, on that person. I know. I didn't have kind of the uh, being able to put it all back into the box. Um, and I'm going to say this. If anybody has ever told you, as a female, as a male, or it doesn't matter, um, that you're just not good enough or that you're just not what they're looking for, keep looking for your people. Keep looking for your spot. Um, because I'm going to tell you that I didn't meet their mold on being a department head, but I wouldn't have been an effective probation officer if I had been in that mold. Because people fail people all the time and they're in that mold. I, I like coming out of the mold and saying, I may not have all the answers, but we'll figure it out together. So I just wanted, I just oh, no. wanted to say that, just no. in case there's some little girl out there that just doesn't fit, uh, can't find her tribe. I didn't find my tribe until I was an adult. So it's okay. Just hang with it. it I promise it'll all work out. I'd rather you say it now than we leave and then you're like, oh, I forgot to say that. But yes. we do have to say one more thing. What? Tomorrow is Amanda's birthday. Oh. Uh, 35, 21. 21. Yeah, tomorrow's Amanda's birthday, and uh, I'm going to be excited because I get to go to Kiwanis tomorrow and uh, going to see Amanda wear a funny hat as everybody sings her happy birthday. So that's going to be the highlight of my day tomorrow. Well, the highlight of mine was that I was going to go to the store, and I know that Kelly gave y'all eggs, and that was kind of her thing. Well, I was going to give y'all Cadbury because I don't do eggs. Um, but then I didn't know how everybody felt about it. Plus, I just, you know, pitched myself that I was going to start doing better, and so I didn't do that. But I wanted you to know that you were in my thought that I was going to give you Cadbury eggs. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everybody. We definitely appreciate it. And tune in next Monday um, as we sit down with uh, Miss Corey Blackshear. Over it.